So today I'm talking about knives that I've basically stopped showing on the channel and we're going to talk about what happened and why have I stopped talking about these specific knives. Um, now this is going to be an easy going video so let's get into it. So starting it off, Tucson. I get a lot of comments. What happened with Tucson? Why do you not show them anymore? Well, you know, when I first started the channel, Tucson was a company that provided phenomenal knives that were of premium materials with premium build quality for around a hundred bucks. So it was a way for people that did not have the money for react prices to get near react quality. Granted, not quite as Riet, but, you know, at least pushing that way. They had the little details down pat, like internal stop pins, ceramic caged bearings on a racetrack, detent ramps, good geometry, so on and so on. Just so many phenomenal details. And even like the micro milling or the carbon fiber they were using with the contouring. It was just gorgeous, gorgeous work. And, and like the micro machining was really cool. You know, you didn't see that on a lot of stuff, especially for the price tag at the time. And it had seemed like they were getting better and better and better and better. And I had raved about them, you know, saying that, man, these guys are, are really stepping it up. And it seemed like their knives were getting better, like I said. But then out of nowhere, they just, it's like they hit a wall. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden, their knives are coming with bad detent lash, um, bad action. Uh, and then even some things that are absolutely unexcusable, like tips hanging out, like where like literally you can stab yourself with a knife while it's closed. Um, you know, and just like some of the worst detent lash and things like that, that, that you can imagine. And it started leaving a bad taste in my mouth because it was like, you know, how are these things leaving the factory? How are these things leaving the factory? These absolutely should not be leaving the factory. That happened back to back over and over and over. So granted, I would get a good knife here and there in between them, but it's like the one good knife would make me, you know, crave another good one, but then I'd be let down three more times. And it started making me feel like they don't care. You know, they don't have a face. Like if you think about Tucson, you don't think of a face. So I think they're very much removed from the community. I, you know, and this is just my impressions. I'm not saying this is true. I don't know if this is true, but it almost feels like all they care about is making these products and getting them out. Granted, all companies are, all companies are trying to make, you know, uh, their business succeed and trying to sell products. But when you're willing to sell things that, that give you a poor reputation, you don't care about the, 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 the consumer. And that is what I started feeling like. I started feeling like Tucson doesn't give a crap about their consumer, not even a little bit. And it makes me wonder if they even get prototypes. Now, you know, maybe before they did and all of a sudden they just stopped. I have no idea what happened, but it seems like all of a sudden something, something happened. Uh, maybe it's new management. I don't know. But, you know, if they were able to do prototypes, I can't imagine some of the things that are the way they are. That Why wouldn't this be caught in a prototype phase? Why wouldn't you say, hey, knock this down a little bit or change this or whatever? Like, so to me, it almost makes me feel like, man, they must not have prototypes. But maybe they do, maybe they do, and they do that good, and then when they're pumping out the, the production ones, it's just they're rushing them so fast. I don't know. Then they have poor heat treatments. Their heat treatments aren't the best. Granted, they do 14C pretty good, you know, some of their budget materials, but as far as premium steels go, they run them soft. Um, which is, was never a big deal to me, by the way. I always accepted that as long as the build quality, quality was there. As long as the materials were really good, you know, I looked at it like, okay, I'm basically getting, I'm getting M390, but I'm basically getting S35. Yeah, that's the way I would look at it. And I wasn't mad at it. But when the other things start becoming sacrificed, you know, it, it makes me not want to, to, to risk my money. Because when I buy it, Say if I buy three in a row and I can't recommend them because they suck, well, that's three losses for me, you know, and, and I just don't have the money to constantly spend on knives that, that just suck. Granted, I want to show you guys the knives that suck. I absolutely do. But even more so, I want to show you the knives that are awesome, right? 
But, you know, it does go hand in hand. With awesome, you're going to have crap. So I have to be able to bring that up too. And I'm not saying Tucson is crap. Let me be clear. There are many, many, many Tucsons I absolutely recommend that I love. I absolutely love. And I think that if you want to experience what I was talking about a minute ago with getting knives at good prices that if from any other company would be four times the value or four times the price tag, check some of these models out. I'll show them on the screen right now. Uh, but these are, I'll link them all down in the description for you guys. These are all fantastic two sons that I absolutely recommend. I've had many versions of and had many other versions from other people in my hand or in for sharpening. So these are knives I can confidently say are really, really good from Tucson. Um, but as far as some of the other models, like, yeah, there's a few others that I absolutely could recommend, but there's just, you know, it's difficult for me to, to spend the money on a knife that I think looks amazing because I've been tricked and duped with knives that I thought looked badass. And I honestly thought were gonna be like the best that they've ever done. Then I get it in hand and it's the worst they've ever done. <laughs> Anyways, you know, it's just not worth the risk right now. And like I said, I don't feel like they care. And until I feel like they care, you know, their prices went up too, by the way. I forgot to say that part. Well, while their quality seems like it's tanking, their prices are going up. You know, granted, I still wanna get some on the channel. I'm just not willing to buy them to find out that I hate them. And, you know, a lot of cases you have to wait like four weeks. So to pay a bunch of money, you know, say if it's 150 bucks and I have to wait four weeks, if it's a lemon and I return it, granted, I waited four weeks. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's get to the next one. You guys get what I'm saying. I just, you know, I want to get more on the channel. I do want to get more Two Sons on the channel, um, but I just, you know, it's just difficult for me to purchase them. And they don't send knives out to reviewers, uh, which is kind of weird because they seem like that would be the most beneficial company that could do that would be them, but uh, I don't know. The next one is Varga VBR. Why have I stopped talking about the Varga VBR? Well, it has nothing to do with build quality because I absolutely love this knife. This is one of the best knives. Um, not only is it gorgeous, not only is it damn good looking, but Rhea executed it perfectly like they usually do. And it is close to a perfect knife as you can get in my opinion. I, man, I, it's such a good knife, but I can't recommend it because you can't get it. So granted, oh, let me be clear, you can go get it, but there's never enough for me to do a full video on. There's never really enough for me to, I can't link them because they're not, they're not in any of my affiliates. So I can't link them, which sucks. But even if I recommended you to go to his Instagram, Vargas Instagram, where you can buy some, I think there's even some right now while I'm making this video up for sale right now, but there are only like three of them. So, you know, it's never worth bringing up in a video and raving about when I know 99.999% of everybody who wants to get one will not be able to get one. Um, I waited a year for mine and paid more than what you could pay for right now from Varga on their Instagram if you go there and buy one. But like I said, you know, I just, I hate showing and rave because it's not even that I'm showing it. I can't show this knife without raving about it. So I'm going to basically rub it in that you can't get it and I got one. So I don't want to do that. The next one. The, the next one, the Benchmade Bug Out. What is the deal with the Benchmade Bug Out? Well, they just they raised the price too high, man. The price is entirely way too high for what you're getting. You're basically getting budget handle materials with you know, semi-premium blade steel, right? But it's not like this thing is that extravagant, right? It just doesn't make sense, the price that they're, they're putting their knives up to, you know, like, there's so many other knives I would recommend before this, like the Hogue Deca. The Hogue Deca comes in two different blade shapes. You can get it in similar materials or better. Um, you can also go to Original Goat and get aluminum or titanium scales for the DECA. Uh, the Hogue RSK MK1 uh, Mini. You can also, or MK2, I think, the Mini. Uh, or the big one, you know, I'd recommend before the bug out. <clears throat> and you can get, you know, Original Goat scales from those, for those too. Um, I have some coming from my R RSK right now. But, you know, these are all, um, 
examples that, that I would recommend before the bug out, even the, the Kaiser Escort, which I hate to recommend a Chinese knife over a USA made knife. And I would recommend the USA made knives before the, the Escort or like even the Manix, Spyderco Manix Lightweight. I recommend that probably the most out of all of them. The Spyderco Manix Lightweight or the Benchmade Griptilian. Heck, there's so many other knives. Anyways, the point is, is that the bug out is just way too overpriced. The Escort you can get for under $100 with arguably better materials, better fit and finish, better everything. Um, granted, the blade steel is a little bit of a downgrade on the Escort, but you're getting it for what? Um, $80, $90 cheaper? I mean, it's crazy. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And it's difficult to recommend when you talk about those prices because there's so, so there's so much competition, so much competition in that price range. Without getting into it too much, I don't, there's some companies I'm not going to really even bring up too much in this video, you know, like Gerber. Gerber, if you guys have been following the channel, you guys know I've never had a Gerber that was any good. Every single one of them have always been crap. And like the decent ones, there's always other knives I would recommend above them. So, you know, it just... I just never had a good, not that I wouldn't feature them on the channel anymore. It's just, I don't because I don't have any good ones. I've never experienced a good one. Um, you know, Leong Ma, we all know about my situation with a Leong Ma. I don't think I need to go into that. I've already done a full video on that, you know, and then there's some other companies, you know, kind of the same that I've spoke about in other videos that I'm not going to get into in this one. Um, next, the Kaiser Towser M in 3V. This is a Knife Center exclusive. Now the reason why I stopped talking about this is because it is a bad failing knife. It fails so easily and there's no play. It's rock solid or it feels solid, but it fails entirely way too easy. I'm scared that I'm gonna put my thumb up here and it's gonna disengage on my finger. So uh, I talked about it when it happened, and then after, you know, I brought up that the, here's the dangers with this knife, I stopped talking about it. Now, I don't know if they're discontinued, but I don't see them on Knife Center anymore. But if you're wondering why I don't recommend this knife anymore, or why I haven't spoken about it or had it in any videos, um, that's the major reason. It's just it's failing so easily. Now, Kaiser has really, really good button locks, so I'm not saying that all their button locks are poor quality, but the one with this one, the lock face geometry was not done well, and it wasn't just mine failing. There was a lot of people's failing, so. The next one is the Refere Noble Kaisers. Any Refere Noble scaled Kaisers, I don't care what model it is, now, I haven't talked about these and haven't showed them on the channel because I would never, ever, ever spend my money on them. They are just entirely way too overpriced for what you're getting. You know, it's basically like a metal screen, like a brass or a copper screen mixed with some sort of epoxy. I can't imagine this handle material is very expensive. So because I don't think it's very expensive, I just don't see the justification of the price tag. Where are you getting these prices from? Granted, it's somewhat new material. You know, it's a little exotic, a little different, but you know, I don't think it's gonna cost more than my Carta or carbon fiber. So when you start looking at the price tags, it's just absurd to me. It's crazy, 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 crazy. And I would not recommend it, nor would I buy it. So I'm definitely not gonna sit here and show something and talk about something that I won't even purchase myself. So that's the reason why. You know, and I just don't want to sit there and dog them. I've said it already, you know, in other videos. That I think they're entirely way too expensive. The next one is the CGRB Riff Raff. So, oh, I would love to show this one more in the videos. But what's happened with mine is it has significant up and down. And I can't stretch the spring because normally I would tune the detent. So, what I would do is I'd stretch the spring in the button lock making the detent stronger and making the lockup stronger. However, this one is at 100% lockup for a button lock, 100%. It can't move any further. I doesn't, It will do nothing if I do that. So the detent is already perfect and fantastic action. This thing's amazing. But, you know, my lock face geometry is really bad. Now, do I think they're all like that? Probably not. And mine's probably a lemon, but this is the only example I have to go off of. So 
maybe they all are like this. I don't know. I can only speak about my example and my example was not good. So I can't recommend it to you. So therefore I don't sit there and bring it up in every video and talk about it. Now I will say I have many, many other CJRB button locks. They're Echo. I have like 12 Pyrites, if not more. I have the XL Pyrite, two of them. They do a phenomenal job with their button locks in most cases. Every single one of those are rock solid, no play, any direction, some of which I've used many, many, many times and they're still super duper solid. Um, but the Riff Raff, for some reason, man, it just, you know, like I said, maybe it's just mine. Maybe it's mine. But that's the only example I have. Um, the next one is the Vargo, Vargo, where the heck is the name? The Vargo Sobata. Yes. The Vargo Sabata. Now the Vargo Sabata is basically a full titanium construction. The, the, the blade is a centered titanium. So basically the blade's titanium. Uh, so it's not magnetic, non-corrosion resistant. Um, but the problem I have is that it has a titanium body with a steel lock bar insert. So it's going to be hardened steel on titanium. So well, the first problem I had was up and down play and it was so bad it was unacceptable. Like I could literally grab the tail end and go like this and the blade, you could see it shifting back and forth. That's how significant it was. So I had to adjust it. There was no choice. So I adjusted the lock bar strength, making it better. The detent got better and got really, really good. And so did the lockup. Now the lockup is rock solid. However, there is significant lock stick. It's so bad. And I put permanent marker on the lock face. I do what I can to prevent it, but you know, it's just, I either got to deal with blade rock or serious lock stick. So I just don't think this thing was made, you know, knives weren't made to make blades out of titanium. Now I know there's the Teravantium, which I have tested, which did pretty good. Um, so I think Teravantium would be the way to go. I, I don't know about the center titanium stuff. Maybe it's similar to Teravantium. I don't know, but I've had nothing but problems with it. Um, I just, I don't like it. I, I think that I feel like I wasted my money and I don't want to recommend something like that to you guys that I, I'm not happy with. So, you know, granted that if you want, really want to get something like this with this type of blade material, try the Terrain 365 knives. They got some great ones. If you want to go that route and get yourself a non-magnetic corrosion proof blade and knife all the way around, um, this one's just not it. And do we have anything else? I think that's it. Work hard, stay tough. You know society's relying on you until next time. Peace.